What's going on guys? I'm Aaron from PhoneDog.com and the Motorola Photon 4G is in the house. Dual core, 1 gigahertz goodness, NVIDIA Tegra 2 processor, 4.3 inch display. It's another super phone that's coming to Sprint. It's going to compete directly with the HTC Evo 3D. Now the benefit here, not only does it have that dual core processor, but it also has global roaming capabilities. So if you travel pretty regularly to Europe, Asia, etc., you're good to go with this 4G smartphone. So it's exciting and it's an Android phone that's coming to Sprint in the next couple of days. Is this a phone for you? Let's go check it out in the unboxing and find out. But first, special thanks to our friends at Best Buy. They hook us up with a lot of cool phones, including this for you, Star One Paw Bandit Game. When you go in to get this phone, when it comes out on the 31st, that's Sunday if I remember right, you're going to walk out working. They're going to help you set up your email, your web, and more. So is this a phone for you? Let's go take a look in the unboxing. So not only is this another 4G high-end smartphone for the nation's third largest wireless carrier, but it has global roaming capabilities thanks to a SIM card slot in the back. So whether your travels take you to Europe or Asia, you don't have to worry about switching out phones or getting a prepaid SIM card when you get over there. You can take your number with you to the country that you're visiting. Here it is, a Motorola Photon 4G with Sprint coming on the 31st of Sunday for $199.99. Premier customers can pre-order it now on Sprint.com. But it comes in this cool little box, a little bit different than the Tupperware box that we remember from the Evo 4G and then the slide out box from the Evo 3D. But on the back you can see this box includes a smartphone, battery, cables, SIM card, yada yada, instruction manuals, you know you want to see the device itself. So you can see here just typical box stuff with, uh, with barcodes on the sides. Then you open it up. And I have to give credit to Sprint where credit's due. This is a, uh, it was made with environmentally friendly glues and contains up to 55% recycled content. So kudos to them for being environmentally friendly when it comes to the box. So there's the uh, Motorola Photon 4G. You can see it there. We'll get to that in just a second. Actually, I'm going to power that on so we can see what's in the box. Same stuff that comes with all of them. My Motorola's USB cable here and then the AC adapter module that you know. And I actually have one sitting on my desk. I'm just going to show it to you instead of unwrapping it. That's what that looks like. Then in here you get your get started stuff. All you need to get going. Vamos. Todo lo que tiene something, something, something that I can't read because I can't pull it out. And then here's a bag to recycle your old phone, and then some information about the Photon. Good reading material for the weekend if you uh, buy it on Sunday. You know, you're like, I want some uh, something to do. You can read the, uh, the instruction manuals. So you have fun with that. But here's the phone. Like I said, one gigahertz dual core NVIDIA Tegra 2 processor, 4.3 inch QHD display, 8 megapixel camera on the back. Now this one has a kickstand, which is cool. So much like the Evo 4G, you can kick it out and watch movies that way. And it's a little bit of a different design. You know, this is going to go head to head or toe to toe, depending on how you want to say it, with the HTC Evo 3D. You know, both of those have dual core processors, both of them are high end, and that's going to go toe to toe with it. And it's going to be interesting to see which design people prefer, which, you know, in terms of performance, Motorola applications platform versus HTC Sense, and more. But specs wise, like I said, 8 megapixel camera on the back, kickstand back there, front facing camera, and it's running Android 2.3 gingerbread with the latest build of Motorola's applications platform. Now what's really cool about this, and I talked about it in the very beginning, international roaming capabilities. So it has a SIM card slot in the back so you can take it overseas and not have to worry about you know switching out your device or doing anything like that. Let me figure out how this battery cover comes off. So you don't have to switch to another device like you know one of their other global roaming capable devices like the Bold 9650. You can use your existing one. You can see the SIM card slot right there along with a micro SD card slot uh, as well. We'll see what the battery, I don't, I hate to pull it out. I'm going to pull it out anyway. Battery is 1,650 milliamp hours. So it'll be interesting to see how that works over the course of a normal day. If it'll be long enough or if it will, uh, the battery will die halfway through the day like a lot of the other Android phones. So here we go. We'll power it back on. Sorry to throw it off that loop. But uh, all in all, it's a good looking device. It's a little bit on the, I wouldn't say thick, but it's just a little bit uh, different in terms of the feel. It feels good in the hand, but it's a little bit thicker than I uh, remember it from the event in New York City. You can see over here, these kind of look like speaker grills, but they're not. They're actual buttons, and I'll show you. The design kind of looks like a speaker grill. But you can see camera shortcut button, volume rocker over there on this side, micro USB charging port, HDMI port on the bottom. You have your kickstand, your camera back there in the back, and then a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack with a power button up top. Now you can see this thing is prone to fingerprints. It has chrome all around the sides and uh, including the sides over here with the uh, ports. So you can see after just a couple of uh, touches, it's going to be a fingerprint magnet. So I'll go ahead and clean it on my shirt so you can see we're starting the services up now. And we'll load it up and uh, get to it. Like I said, Android 2.3 with the latest build of Motorola's applications platform. So it's going to be very similar to the Droid X2, the Droid 3, 
and more. And actually pretty similar on the uh, the software front or the uh, hardware front rather as well. This one obviously has Sprint's 4G uh, WiMAX capabilities built in, whereas the Droid 3 and the Droid X2 don't. But they have that dual core processor, so a uh, very similar experience there. You'll notice right out of the gate, seven home screens with Sprint ID pre-installed. So this is one of the first high-end smartphones on Sprint, where Sprint ID is a pretty integral. Uh, experience on the phone. So you can see what's different about this one versus the Droid 3. Scrolling up and down instead of scrolling from left to right on this version of Motorola's applications platform. So you can see what comes pre-installed out of the box. And just to scroll down to some of the Sprint stuff, NASCAR Sprint Cup Mobile, Sprint Mobile Wallet, Mobile uh, Music Plus, Radio, TV and Movies, Sprint Worldwide. So when you roam, you have that visual voicemail pre-installed and then Sprint Zone as well. Of course, this one has webtop connector. So much like the Atrix 4G, should be able to connect and actually I have an HD dock on the way, which I'll show you in the full review courtesy of Sprint. So special thanks to them, not only for hooking us up with the unit, but also hooking us up with the, uh, with the HD dock, which is coming soon. Capacitive buttons down here, and you can see, all in all, very, very pretty fast performance. And you know, it's funny, I live, uh, and my home office is in, uh, I wouldn't say a Sprint dead zone by any means, but I usually get two to three bars of service with Sprint, it's not the best. You can see this one's rocking full service, and right as I said that, it dropped to uh, four bars, but you can see, that it's pretty good and actually I went down to get, not to get too technical on you, but I went into settings a minute ago and looked at it in the status and you can see 88 dBm, which is one of the highest I've seen with Sprint so far in my home office. Usually it's around, you know, 98 to 100. So pretty impressive there. Uh, you know, definitely a good antenna. It's going to be a good phone if you're using it for voice and for text messaging. It's going to be the one to get on Sprint. I haven't done any data speed tests on it just yet. I'm not going to do quadrant standard. I'm going to save that for the, uh, full review, but you can see, just to give you a quick walkthrough of what it looks like, 4.3 inch QHD display, and all, you know, it's a nice high-end uh, Android smartphone, a good addition to their lineup. Let's see, what can we show you? Let's show you the browser, that's what we'll do. And we'll wait for that to load up. We'll go ahead and load up PhoneDog so you can see what it looks like on the 4.3 inch display, PhoneDog.com. And here we go, it's loading up right now. Now compare this to the HTC Evo 3D, which launched a couple of weeks ago, and is going to be the prime competitor to this device with a 1.2 gigahertz dual core processor, uh, Android 2.3 as well, but with Sense 3.0. So you got some uh, competition going on between both of these devices, with the exception of the fact this one has 3D capabilities, whereas this one doesn't, but it has global roaming capabilities. So a couple of uh, things to keep in mind there. So phone dog's loading up right now. You can see what it looks like on the display. In the meantime, you can see that front-facing camera up there on top as well. So it's a good-looking device. It's a little plasticky. In terms of the build quality, I'd probably prefer, and this is going to be a personal thing, but I'd probably prefer the build quality of the Evo 3D. That said, Motorola's applications platform, tremendous improvement. I find this device to be really speedy, and uh, the global roaming capabilities are a huge, huge plus. Let me go ahead and take this off so when I do the uh, HD video sample test a little later, I can... Make sure the sticker's off. We'll get this pulled off while we're waiting for it to load up. There we go. And you can see phone dog loading. Transitions are relatively fast. And then just to show you, since Sprint's 3G network speeds are pretty terrible, that is what it looks like scrolling over. So nice and fast there. And then of course in messaging, not a lot's changed here. If you watch the Droid 3 video or the Droid X2 videos, you can see very similar here with Motorola's multi-touch keyboard. And then most likely, I'm going to throw out a guess and say swipe's pre-installed as well. Yep, swipe pre-installed out of the box as well. So all in all, it's a nice device, but it's uh, very similar to the Motorola Droid 3 and the Motorola Droid X2, with the exception of uh, those global roaming capabilities. So it's Sprint's first 4G device that sports global roaming capabilities. Very, very cool there. Much more coverage to come on the Motorola Photon 4G on PhoneDog.com. Stay tuned for the reviews, the first impressions, and more coverage with this high-end Sprint handset. In the meantime, be sure to like us on Facebook at Facebook.com slash phone dog. We're doing the greatest tech giveaway ever and you could win a tablet. So be sure to uh, follow me on Twitter, phone dog underscore Aaron, and on Facebook at facebook.com slash phone dog AB. Thanks so much for watching. Keep it locked on the site for continuing coverage. We'll see you next time.